Rabbi Haley Goldstein of Base Ithaca, a project of Cornell Hillel. Yerel Osorto, vicar at St. Luke Lutheran Church. I'm the Reverend Megan Castellan from St. John's Episcopal Church in Ithaca. Lauren Goldberg, Max Kassler, Cantor Abbey Lyons, Ithaca College Hillel. I am Reverend Margaret Weiss and I serve as the minister of the First Unitarian Society of Ithaca. I'm Rabbi Rachel Safin from Temple Bethel. I am Father Joe Marku, pastor of St. Catherine of Siena, Roman Catholic Church. Hi, my name is Reverend Dr. David Caden. I'm the minister at the First Congregational Church here in Ithaca. I'm Lisa P. Christian, the executive director of Community Faith Partners. Reverend Teresa Sivers, senior pastor at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Rabbi Suzanne Brody, Temple Bethel. I'm Debbie Bennett Reynolds, pastor of First Baptist Church in Ithaca. I'm Mahmoud Burton from the Al Huda Islamic Center in Ithaca Muslim Community. I'm Naomi Walensky, Education Director at Congregation Tikkun Ba'or. Reverend Tim Dean, Hospital Chaplain. Joan Mack, I'm from the Religious Society of Friends. I'm Eric Clay, founder of Shared Journeys. I'm the Reverend Kiri Ann Weaver from the First Presbyterian Church of Ithaca. Rabbi Ari Weiss, Executive Director, Cornell Hillel. Dr. King once stated that we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or perish together as fools. Mi yaymar di dama di dach sumek tefei. Who is to say that your blood is redder than anyone else's? Babylonian Talmud, Tractate Sanhedrin, 74a. John's first letter tells us, God is love, and those who love live in God, and God lives in them. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. I'm going to share uh, from one of the classic commentary on 40 Hadith of Imam al-Nawawi. The faith of no one will be complete and perfected until his Islam includes safety for people, the desire to do good to them, and to have good will for all of them in his dealings with them. My God, keep my tongue from evil, my lips from lies. In our baptismal covenant, every time we baptize a new baby or welcome someone new into our church, Every time we gather for a big occasion, we repeat together, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? And we respond, I will, with God's help. Bienaventurados los que tienen hambre y sed de justicia, pues ellos serán saciados. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be filled. Matthew 5, verse 6. Our tradition teaches us that there is a reason that Adam was created as a single human being in the image of God. Shelo yomar Adam lachavero Abba gadol meavicha. So that one person will not say to another, my ancestor is better than your ancestor. Sanhedrin 4.5. As Unitarian Universalists, we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every being. Our values are grounded in justice, compassion, and equity, and we affirm love in the face of hatred. We affirm a freedom of thought and conscience and strive for peace in ourselves and in our communities. In 1656, our founder, George Fox, wrote these words. Be pattern, be example, in all countries, places, islands, nations, wherever you come, that your carriage and your life may preach among all sorts of people and to them. Then you will come to walk cheerfully over the world, answering that of God in everyone. The Torah teaches in Vayikra chapter 19, verse 18, V'yahavta l'orecha kamocha, and you shall love your fellow as yourself, this speaks not only of instances in which we're in agreement with our fellows, but also in instances of radical disagreement. Even then we are taught, you must deal with your fellow with dignity, with respect, and with compassion. Where Jesus is asked about the greatest commandment in the Jewish law. 
Teacher, asked the lawyer of Jesus, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I am reading today from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Beloved, let, let us love, love one another, another because love, love is from God. From God. Everyone, everyone who loves, loves is born, born of God, God and knows God. God. Whoever does, does not love does not, does not know God, God. For, God is, for love. God is love. And as Presbyterians, we do things by group. So that's the setting out of which this statement arose. In the Bible, we are commanded to love our neighbor as ourself, but we are also required to do justice, which means that when someone else chooses hate, we have to step in and try to right that wrong. Instead, we choose love. Scripture teaches us to love one another because God is love and we are all made in his image. Let's reject the path of the fool. Hello, the elder said, what is hateful to you do not do unto others. That is the whole Torah. The rest is explanation. Go and learn. The founder of my tradition offered a different vision. We make lives worth living when we empower each other. Empowerment requires freedom from fear of death or prejudice. We thrive through equality and freedom, free speech, religion, and association. When Jesus walked on this planet, he encountered many angry, hurtful, fearful, wounded, and broken people. And his response to them was love, compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. And he invited them to change their behavior as well. And he asked his disciples to do the same. Do not feed your kinsfolk in your heart. Reason frankly with your neighbor, so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19, verses 17 to 18. Hate has no home here. 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 Hate has, has no, no home here. here. Hate that kills or denies has no home here. Hate has no home here. Hate has no home here. Hate has no home here.
Welcome to our worship service at First Unitarian Society of Ithaca as the season turns from October's bright colors to November on this day known by different names in different traditions. All Saints Day, All Souls Day, Samhain, Dios de los Muertos. May we continue to reach for connection even while distanced, dig deep for inspiration, and engage with this complex world as we shepherd our community through this uncertain time. My name is Magdalene Lindeberg, and I am the Celebration Associate today. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to everyone, whether you are newcomers or longtime attendees, members of the Ithaca community, or watching from elsewhere. We are so glad you are with us today. Be sure to check your email, our Facebook page, and our website for more information about how to create connections. If you'd like to receive our weekly updates describing opportunities for engagement, please email a request to office at uuithaca.org. Note that today is a Sharing Sunday, where the whole of the offering will be shared with the Food Bank of the Southern Tier. I will provide more information during the offertory. Our service this morning has been pre-recorded, but we look forward to sharing the service broadcast on Sunday morning and seeing you at the live coffee hour that follows. Our opening words this morning are by Reverend Joan Javier Duval, who serves as the minister at our UU congregation in Montpelier, Vermont. Here, here is where you can lay it down, lay down all that you have carried, the weight of the world that has rounded your back, leaving you aching and exhausted. Here, here is where healing begins, where burdens are set down and alongside one another, their magnitude does not seem as great. Here, here is where the door is thrown open and the light can lift away the shadows and what was hidden can now be seen. Here, here is where you can rest, where nothing is expected, but that you bring all of who you are into the presence of the holy and of this loving community. Whoever you are, whoever you love, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here, here, you belong. The flight of chalice is the symbol of mystics and heretics, artists and activists, reformers and refugees, and Unitarian Universalists everywhere. They light this chalice for the warmth of love, the light of truth, and the energy of action. all had a wonderful and safe Halloween yesterday. This month we are exploring the many ways our UU faith invites us to be a people of healing. Who out there has ever had a fight with someone they cared about? 
It could be a friend, a sibling or other family member, a classmate or someone else in your life. I have many times throughout my life. Our faith reminds us that healing takes work. After a fight with someone, sometimes we can feel like we never want to see that person again. It's easier to ignore or run away from the mess. This is true whether we are the ones who did harm or got harmed. It takes courage, commitment, and skill to successfully travel the path of healing. It's time to open up our packets, marked 11-1 or November 1st, that's today. And let's all look inside them now. Huh, it's a piece of string or yarn. Hmm, and it has a knot in it. Knots are used in sailing, rock climbing, camping, and all sorts of situations. We use them to tie our shoelaces. Knots are also a way of describing the tangled fights between people and the ways each of us feel after we get in a fight. Some folks say, it feels like there is a knot in my stomach. Just like it's hard to untangle a knot, it's also hard to fix a relationship when we hurt someone. Untying the knot helps us remember some important things about how to fix a mistake we've made or a mess that has arisen between us and others. Let's see if we can get these knots untangled together, shall we? Just like when we're trying to untangle string or yarn or a huge clump of necklaces and bracelets, that's never happened to me, the first thing you need to do is admit that there's a knot. And sometimes part of that is also finding the knot. Sometimes they're really obvious and sometimes they're harder to find. Ignoring the knot only makes the knot tighter and harder to untangle. It takes effort to untie a knot. We can't give up after only one try. Sometimes we have to ask others for help and advice about how to untie complicated knots. You should be ready for more knots to develop as you're trying to untangle the first one. If we're lucky, we have one knot in one piece of string and we can get it untangled quickly and easily. But that is not always the case. Sometimes it is many knots and maybe even more than one piece of string. And it can make you want to give up because doing the work of untangling these knots is hard. It's the same when we have a fight. It is hard to do the work of healing from these experiences. But our faith reminds us that we can do this work to untangle and heal the knots of hurt. Well, I hope that you manage to get your knot untied by now. And if you haven't, I hope that you keep trying. Because I promise, it's worth the time and effort in the end. Each week we create a space in our worship together as a communal spiritual practice. We lift up the names and circumstances that call for our joy and celebration and for our concern and our sorrow. If you're watching this service in its live format, I invite you to type your joy or your sorrow in the chat box, or if you wish, you can speak it aloud to the people you're watching with or aloud into the universe. I lift up prayers for a fair, safe, and honest election in this country on Tuesday. I also lift up prayers for the Jewish communities in Ithaca and pray that they might have strength to persevere amidst the anti-Semitism of the past week and lift up prayers of gratitude for the outpouring of support that has been sent to them in this past week, including from this organization and from other congregations and religious communities throughout the area. Together, may we trust that these joys and sorrows those that we have spoken into the universe, those that we have kept in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts, be held by the universe. And may we offer our love and compassion so that they may be held with care. At the beginning of our live coffee hour each week, we will have a facilitator who will offer space for the sharing of joys and sorrows. May we all engage in the communal spiritual practice of listening deeply 
and offering our healing care and compassion to one another, particularly during this challenging time. Now holding in our hearts the joys and the sorrows of our lives, let us continue some moments of reflection and prayer. At this time of year, it's said that the veil is thin between the worlds of the living and the dead. All Saints Day, All Souls Day, Samhain, Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, so many ways and rituals to acknowledge this thin veil, the passing of the darkest part of the year, the welcome of the harvest, the honoring of the lives of those we have loved who have gone before us. Each year at this time, we lift up the memories of those who have died in our families, in our circle of friends, in our congregation, in our community, in our world. We honor them. We reflect and remember. We remember. We remember. At the rising sun and at its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of the autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have joy, we crave to share, we remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. For as long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. This month, our theme is healing. And I'm going to teach you a chant that I learned from my friend, Elisa S. Keeler, a local musician who taught this to me. Light surrounds me, light above me, light within me, shining through me. Light surrounds me, light above me, Light within me, shining through me. So this week we'll just learn the first part. There are more parts. Um, we'll learn them through this month. But picture as we see the sun, the light, could be any other light of something, how we bring it into ourselves and how we shine it out into the world. All right, let's do it line by line. Light surrounds me. Light surrounds me. Light above me. Light above me. Light within me. Light within me. Shining through me. Shining through me. All together now. Light surrounds me, light above me, light within me, shining through me. Light surrounds me, light above me, light within me, shining through me. Light surrounds me, 
Light above me, light within me, shining through me, light surrounds me, light above me, light within me, shining through me. Each week, we take an offering to sustain the important ministries and programs of this congregation and its presence in Ithaca. Today is a sharing Sunday with the Food Bank of the Southern Tier. The Food Bank is committed to creating a future without hunger, where access to healthy food by all is recognized as fundamental to the well-being and success of individuals and the foundation of a strong and vibrant society. We serve counties in this region covering nearly 4,000 square miles. In 2019, the Food Bank distributed 13.3 million pounds of food and grocery items. If you designated your offering last week to the shared plate, that will also be contributed to the Food Bank. May these gifts bring about connection, inspiration, and engagement in our community and beyond.
Our reading this morning comes from words by Parker Palmer. Heartbreak comes with the territory called being human. When love and trust fail us, when what once brought meaning goes dry, when a dream drifts out of reach, a devastating disease strikes, or someone precious to us dies, our hearts break and we suffer. But there are two quite different ways for the heart to break. There's the brittle heart that breaks apart into a thousand shards, a heart that takes us down as it explodes. Then there's the supple heart, the one that breaks open, not apart, growing into greater capacity for the many forms of love. Only the supple heart can hold suffering in a way that opens to new life. The poet Adrian Rich once wrote, my heart is moved by all I cannot save. So much has been destroyed. I have to cast my lot with those who age after age, perversely, with no extraordinary power, reconstitute the world. My heart is moved, she wrote. My heart is moved. Lately, I feel very aware of my heart. I feel very aware of the ways that my worry, my sadness, my heartbreak feel within my body. There's so much rounding our shoulders these days, bearing down with its weight. The worry of COVID, nearly eight months into this pandemic and realizing that we may have just that long before we find our way out to the other side. The shifting earth beneath our feet of schools and workplaces being open, no closed, no open, no virtual, no open, but only exactly in this way the breakdown in the foundation of our democracy, a severely imbalanced Supreme Court, an election fraught with dishonesty, generations of voter suppression, and a looming drama, no matter how it pans out. The rising up of white supremacy and fascism that threatens the very core of our being and all we hold dear. The continued violence and murder at the hands of those who are meant to protect and to serve against those with black and brown bodies. The degradation of our planet at our own hands. The crisis we find ourselves in with a drastically changing climate. There's so much. So much to carry. Shifting our weight to continue our journey despite the wearing down of our spirits. So much has been destroyed. And, and, voters showing up in numbers that have not happened for a long time, blossoming efforts in communities around the state and the country to address the need for reform of our police departments, opportunities to engage on individual and community levels in conversations about race, racism, anti-Semitism, privilege, the climate crisis, the possibility of growth, of hope, of a new reality, if we roll up our sleeves and do the work, if we show up, if we stay present. We are who we are. We have the power we have. None of us has extraordinary or superhuman powers we're only as strong as our gifts, our tenacity, and our choice to do good in the world. One of our greatest Unitarian Universalist theologians, the Reverend Dr. Rebecca Parker, once said, your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. The mind's power, the strength of the hands, the reaches of the heart, the gift of speaking, listening, imagining, seeing, waiting. Any of these can serve to feed the hungry, 
bind up wounds, welcome the stranger, praise what is sacred, do the work of justice or offer love. Any of these can draw down the prison door, hoard bread, abandon the poor, obscure what is holy, comply with injustice or withhold love. You must answer this question. What will you do with your gifts? Choose to bless the world. Choose to bless the world. To bless the world, we must find an openness within ourselves to be stretched and challenged and changed in ways that are uncomfortable and sometimes difficult. As Parker Palmer noted in our reading this morning, in order for the heart to break open, it must be flexible and pliable, able to be stretched and pulled. Hearts broken open are able to receive love in a way that welcomes healing and new growth. Part of that healing journey is not simply moving into the future, but acknowledging the path that we have followed, which others have laid in their lifetimes. As it has been said, we sit beneath trees we did not plant. Now, I remember during the last presidential election in 2016, seeing pictures of Susan B. Anthony's grave covered in those I voted stickers placed there by women who had cast their vote, some for what they hoped would be the first female president of the United States. What a powerful image. What a powerful honoring of the life of one person who paved the way for other women to have freedoms in their lifetimes. Indeed, there are many graves upon which an I voted sticker could have been placed. Historians have taught us more about our history, uncovering many of the stories of how women's suffrage came to be, many that are different from what we've been originally told. We know that there are many other people, women and men of all races and ethnicities who fought hard for the beginnings of women's suffrage and kept fighting until all women could legally vote regardless of their race. We know that still today, the path to true equality is not a straight line, but varied and curved and sometimes rocky. Deep down, we know that the path is not finished, that there are many who have yet to experience true equality and equity and justice. As with any fight for justice, there are many hearts and minds and hands that go into the fight many souls who have offered themselves to the cause, many who chose to use their gifts to bless the world, to break hearts open, to bend the arc toward justice, to lift up the values of justice and equity. Those who have gone before us beyond the veil of our knowing are our teachers and our guides. And it is through their stories of perseverance, justice seeking, transformative love, that we might find the courage and the strength within ourselves to continue that work of communal healing. Parker Palmer reminds us, heartbreak comes with this territory of being called human. When love and trust fail us, when what once brought meaning goes dry, when a dream drifts out of reach, our hearts break and we suffer. So I want you to close your eyes or soften your gaze in front of you. Can you think of a time when your heart broke? Perhaps it felt like waves of sorrow crashing in, taking over all of you, consuming you in grief and in pain. Perhaps the breaking felt like a tearing of garments, a wailing, a thrashing out in anger and in pain at the loss. 
Perhaps instead the feeling of heartbreak came in the intense beauty and embodied love bursting forth from you. Maybe the heartbreak was the bursting forth of light and love that came from something so incredibly beautiful, your breath was taken away. However your heart broke, there must also have been that moment when, completely overwhelmed with grief or with joy, a breath came, a return to the breath a return to a rhythm of life that courses through us all, the life-giving and life-sustaining breath that reminds us that we are all just moments away from pain or joy, a breath that returns us to ourselves. Open your eyes. Our living tradition of Unitarian Universalism honors the breaking of your heart and its healing. We know that healing comes in many forms and times and circumstances. We affirm that each of us may take a different path to reach a place of solace, of healing, of growth. We also affirm that there is a call from the aching, broken, wounded world for us to use our gifts as a blessing. Ours is a tradition rooted in compassion, in community, in the transformative power of love to heal the wounded places within ourselves and each other. Ours is a tradition that asks us to practice compassion and love, and in doing so, nurturing our supple hearts so they may open us to new ways of loving and being loved. This is what it means to go out and bring love, courage, and justice to this beautiful and broken world. This is what it means to acknowledge the places where we can do better as individuals and as citizens of this world. To see the world as both broken and beautiful is to acknowledge that suffering exists, that which is within our control and that which is beyond our reach. To see the world as both broken and beautiful is to search for the places where our love and our gifts might enter into the healing. To see the world as beautiful and broken is to find solace in knowing that one path toward healing is to be broken open in such a way that we are forever changed, never to return to life as it once was. Ours is a beautiful and broken world. Our capacity for growth and healing is more massive than we could ever comprehend. We can reconstitute the world with love, with compassion, with the healing power of justice-seeking community. In each day, in each moment, we have the choice to curse or bless the world. May we choose wisely. May we choose to bless the world. So may it be. Amen and blessed be. Let us acknowledge the suffering in the world, all that has been destroyed. Let us lift up the resilience and the regrowth that rises above the brokenness. Let us reconstitute the world, bend the arc toward justice, choose to bless one another, ourselves and this world. Let us choose justice, fairness, compassion, responsibility, community, equity, and love. Always, always love. We extinguish our chalice, but not the hope and courage that it represents. We carry our tender and indestructible hearts, our love and our courage, out into this beautiful and broken world. Our service has ended. Let our true service now begin. Go in peace.